Okay. Hi, hello everyone. Am I audible? Hi guys. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, hello. Uh, can you guys hear me? All right. Nice. And uh, am I? Just a second. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, good evening. Good evening, Dr. Simran. Good evening, Mohammed Ashik. Good evening, Priyanka. Just give me a second. I will check the long key. Can you guys see my screen also? You can see my screen also, right? Yes, sir. Chika ji. Chika ji. Nice. So let's start. So uh, this session is going to be primarily focused on our uh, INICT examination, right? Uh, so what I thought was that, you know, there are certain uh, topics which are repeatedly asked in the INICT examination. I mean, there's a pattern and the same questions, the same topics are repeatedly asked. So let's spend some time in, you know, uh, Understanding those topics better, we'll spend some time on the on the theory part also, and side by side we will do all the avas niyari. You can't hear me. Am, am I audible, guys? Are you? Muhammad Ashik ji, apna wo dekhiye. Aapka earphones mein garbad hogi. Ha. Baaki logon ko aariye. Anandi and Jasnur have told me that they can hear me. Okay. Chaliye. Audible, wide and clear. Wide and clear. Okay. Audio is fine, sir. Okay. Chaliye. So let's start. Okay. So my, my aim is to cover all the topics that are frequently asked in the exams. Sir, full screen kar sakte. Uh, ye full screen nahi hai kya? इतना ही है यार ठीक है तो मेरा एम ये है कि आई विल ट्राई टू कवर ऑल द क्वेश्चंस यू कैन ज़ूम इफ यू वांट ट्राई अरे यार कैसे ज़ूम करेंगे भाई देखो लोगों ने यू कैन पिंच एंड ज़ूम डॉक्टर ये जब मेडिकल स्टूडेंट्स डॉक्टर बोलते हैं ना आई फील वेरी वियर्ड यार ऐसे ही है मुझे इतनी आती है भाई Sir, duration of class. Chalo, baaki baate baad mein karenge. Let's start. So this is a uh, important question. A young patient with acute psychosis is admitted to the hospital. Actually, this is this question was asked in the AIMS exam, not the INICT. Before INICT, we had AIMS exam. Uh, a young patient, acute psychosis, is admitted to the hospital. He wakes up and asks for his wife, even though she is in the same room as him. When she is pointed out, he claims that she is not his wife. And that she is being impersonated by someone else. What is the most likely diagnosis? Right? What diagnosis hai guys? What is the answer? So before we talk about it, before we talk about uh, the answer, we know that it's a delusion. Now somebody tell me. Someone tell me delusions are the disorders of which component of thought? अरे शुभम मैं स्टूडेंट्स को क्यों नहीं देख पा रहा हूं यार आज जूम पे जो स्टूडेंट्स उनको मैं देख क्यों नहीं पा रहा हूं आज चलिए एनी प्लीज आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन डिल्यूजन्स आर डिसऑर्डर्स ऑफ विच पार्ट ऑफ थॉट फ्लो फॉर्म कंटेंट और पोजेशन Delusions are disorders of which component of thought? हाँ जी आंसर बताइए बहुत ही सिंपल क्वेश्चन है Delusions are disorders of content of thought. It's a very commonly asked question. Maybe not so much in INICT, but it's a very important question for your NEET PG examination. 
right now we know that this particular patient has presented you with which kind of delusion it is a delusion of misidentification in misidentification what happens what happens is we have doubts on the identity of the person the patient has doubts on the identity of the person so we have got two types of delusion we have got capgras syndrome and we have got frigoli syndrome now cap ek second main aap logo ke questions ko answer karunga let me first complete it capgras syndrome is also called as delusion of doubles in capgras syndrome patient believes that a familiar person has been replaced by a similar looking stranger so basically how do we how do we describe it for example say a man comes back to his house he enters his drawing room and he looks at his wife the wife is sitting in the drawing room he looks at her now wife is a familiar person wife is a familiar person now this patient of yours he gets an idea or he gets a belief or he gets a doubt that this woman who is sitting in his house who looks exactly like his wife is not actually his wife but that his wife has been replaced by a similar looking stranger right so this guy will fight with wife please remember a patient who has capgras syndrome fights with his wife fights with a familiar person and blames that you are somebody else so how do we remember this capgras syndrome c stands for close cap gras close person got replaced by a stranger you can remember it by this mnemonic close person got replaced by a stranger this is capgras syndrome right whereas the other misidentification uh, misidentification syndrome is frigoli syndrome in frigoli syndrome what happens the patient believes that a familiar person is changing the physical appearance now the example that i often take is say there's a patient he believes that his wife wants to kill him he has a delusion of persecution that wife wants to kill me now this patient also starts believing that wife follows me wife follows me wherever i go and now this patient also develops a delusion that that so that i am not able to identify her wife changes her appearance while following me wife changes the appearance while following me so what is the history that you will get this patient will go and start fighting with the random woman he will start fighting with the random woman he'll go to some random woman and he'll say you are my wife you are my wife you are following me and you have changed your face so that i am not able to identify you this is frigoli syndrome so the patient who had capgras syndrome is fighting with his wife accusing her of being a stranger whereas whereas a patient with frigoli syndrome is fighting with a stranger accusing that you are actually my wife so how do we remember this familiar person giving a goli hum hindi mein bolte hain na ki goli de raha hai goli de raha hai matlab is trying to befool me is trying to make a fool out of me so familiar person giving goli is frigoli just remember capgras guy fights with the familiar person frigoli guy fights with a stranger yaad rahega ye would you be able to remember this theek hai what were the other options in that question capgras syndrome ha to answer kya hai iska Young patient with acute psychosis admitted to the hospital wakes up and asks for his wife, even though she is in the same room. When pointed out, he says she is not his wife and she is being impersonated by someone else. So the answer is very simple: Capgras syndrome. It is not Frigoli syndrome. What is Cotard syndrome? Who will tell me what is Cotard syndrome? Psychotic depression. That is correct. But what is Cotard syndrome? One second, yar. Aaj main tum logon ki shakal nahi dekh pa raha hu for some reason. अटेंडीज कहाँ है लेट मी आस माई टेक गाय वाई कांट आई सी शुभम इफ यू कैन हियर मी मैं बच्चों को भी नहीं देख पा रहा हूँ आज चल दिख रहे हैं सब अरे भाई तुमको दिख रहे हैं मुझे देख खुद देखने हैं ना पार्टिसिपेंट्स मुझे बस पैनलिस्ट दिख रहा है कैन सी ओनली द पैनलिस्ट इंटरेक्शन कैसे करेंगे बच्चे दिखेंगे नहीं तो
चलो यार सॉरी सर अटेंडेंस पे क्लिक कीजिए ऊपर अटेंडेंस पे ऊपर अटेंडेंस पे हां कहां है ऊपर अटेंडेंस पार्टिसिपेंट पे नीचे क्लिक करेंगे ना तो ऊपर पैनलाइट्स और अटेंडेंस का एक पॉपअप आता है तो अटेंडेंस पे क्लिक करेंगे आप, तो आप मेरी स्क्रीन देख पा रहे हैं ना पार्टिसिपेंट्स दिख रहे हैं मुझे पार्टिसिपेंट्स पे क्लिक किया मैंने अटेंडेंस दिख गए अब क्या करूं अटेंडेंस पे सब वहां पे शो हो जाएंगे आपको और इनको फेस देखना है सर आपका हां लास्ट टाइम ऐसे वो साइड में मुझे दिख रहे थे ना आई कुड सी ऑल ऑफ देम आई कुड टॉक टू देम वो क्यों नहीं हो रहा है आज इनके वीडियोस ऑन नहीं होंगे सर अरे यार तो ऑफ वीडियो दिख जानी चाहिए कम से कम नहीं सर वीडियोस ओपन नहीं देखा ऑन वीडियोस पे दिखाई देंगे वो ठीक है भाई साहब चलो सॉरी ऐसे ही करना पड़ेगा हां ओके व्हाट इज कोटार्ड सिंड्रोम बेसिकली निहिलिस्टिक डिल्यूजंस आवर वीडियोस आर ऑफ सर आई नो योर वीडियोस आर ऑफ बट यू नो यूजुअली इन द बॉक्स ऑन द राइट साइड ऑफ द स्क्रीन आई कैन सी ऑफ में भी दिखता है हां एग्जैक्टली राहुल इज राइट सर कंटिन्यू ओके वंदना मैम एज यू से वंदना मैम का इंस्ट्रक्शन आया कंटिन्यू करो टाइम वेस्ट करो चलो निहिलिस्टिक डिल्यूजन सो कोटार्ड सिंड्रोम इज निहिलिस्टिक डिल्यूजन निहिलिस्टिक डिल्यूजन व्हाट इज निहिलिस्टिक डिल्यूजन patient basically has the basic theme of nihilism nihilism is that everything is over patient may say that everything is over the world has come to an end patient may say the world has come to an end the patient may say that my internal organs are rotten so basic theme is everything is gone nihilism and what is othello syndrome delusion of infidelity the patient believes that the partner is cheating on me the patient may say my wife is cheating on me my husband is cheating on me my girlfriend is cheating on me so yes it is also called as morbid jealousy very good dr pratish theek hai so this was about the first question all right inict 2020 question a slightly slightly controversial question but a, an often asked question 40 year old male comes to psychiatry opd complaints of having repetitive thoughts that he feels are his own thoughts only the thoughts make him uncomfortable he has to wash hands again and again before you tell me the answer what exactly does this patient have what does this patient have kya hai is patient ko haan ji what does this patient have bataiye what does this patient have he has got obsessions repetitive intrusive thought repetitive intrusive thought ha chat dekh raha hu main ocd likha hai aap log ne repetitive intrusive thoughts now the question is whether obsessions are disorders of flow of thought form of thought content of thought position of thought now there is a slight controversy what is the reason behind controversy the synopsis of psychiatry says that obsessions are disorders of content of thought whereas i'll be teaching you that obsessions are disorders of possession of thought this this controversy is for the simple reason that there are two ways of describing the four components of thought the major way is uh, describing them according to the subheadings of flow of thought form of thought content of thought possession of thought there is another way where you divide thoughts into only two points or two two parts one is content and i think one is form so when you use this classification flow form content possession you mark it as d if in the options you have been given all the four options flow form content possession it means that the bigger classification is being followed the fact that flow form content possession or stream stream form content possession is given tells us that the bigger classification is being followed which is given in the fisher psychopathology which is a standard textbook of psychopathology so the answer without doubt is option b possessions please do not get confused about it iska answer possession hi hai theek hai yaad rakhiyega uh, don't get confused abhi koi bole bhi content hai to don't get confused i understand there is a controversy but uh, the answer is possession theek hai all right again this question was asked in inict it was also asked in fmg examination so during mental status examination a patient is asked to subtract 7 from 100 serially what is being tested 
Now, please remember when we do MSc, mental status examination, we do, we talk about multiple things. One of the things that we test is attention. What is attention? What is attention? When we say, ki, why are you not giving attention? Abhi hum bolte ki, but why are you not giving attention? When we say, why are you not giving attention? Basically, what do we, what do we imply by that? Attention is the ability to attend or, or, you know, give focus on a particular stimuli without getting distracted by other things. For example, if you're watching this video or if you're watching this live stream, your aim is to listen to me. Whereas the other things that are happening around in your room, say, say the AC is making some noise, say, uh, you are sitting in the library, somebody else is talking. Your aim is to not get distracted and focus on this. So ability to attend to a stimulus without getting distracted is attention. And how do we test for attention? We ask the patient that it's called as digit span test or digit repetition test. Digit span test or digit repetition test. We basically tell the patient that, look, I will say some numbers and you have to repeat those numbers after me. So for example, if I say two, five, patient is supposed to say two, five. When I say three, four, nine, patient is supposed to say three, four, nine. If I say four, two, one, eight, patient has to say four, two, one, eight, right? So the ability to repeat five digits forward. What do you mean by forward? Five digits forward. So if I say four, two, one, nine, six, patient says four, two, one, nine, six. There's a test called as digit repetition backward. In that case, what do we do? If I say four, two, patient will say two, four. If I say three, four, five, patient says five, four, three. So when we are testing for attention, we use digit span test and digit forward. We say digit forward, right? So please remember this question was also asked in the INICT examination. If they give you both the options, digit forward as well as digit backward, you will go for digit forward test, not digit backward test. Okay. So this is attention. Now, what is concentration? What is concentration? Aap log last mein iska PDF kya? Do I have to keep the PDF because I just deleted something? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So from now on, I won't delete. I'm sorry. What is concentration? Concentration is the ability to sustain the attention. Sustained attention. Right. For example, we say, no, I'm not able to concentrate. What does it mean? I'm, if I'm not able to study for a prolonged period of time, we say I'm not able to concentrate. So sustained attention. Now, how do you test for concentration? Basically, you want to see whether the patient is able to, you know, keep focus on the same thing for a significant period of time or not. So you ask, kindly subtract seven from hundred and do it five times serially. You subtract hundred uh, seven from hundred. It is 93. Now, whatever comes, the patient is supposed to subtract seven again from it. So patient goes like this, 100, 93, 86, 79, 72, 65. If the patient can do it five times, then we say that the concentration is intact. Then we say that the concentration is intact. So this is, so if the patient is being asked to subtract seven from hundred serially, it is called as, it is basically we are testing for concentration. Certain patients who are not able to do so, Another test is 40 minus three. Serially subtract three from 40, five times. Even that is a test for concentration. Right guys? Okay. All right. Now, before we go to the next topic of uh, antipsychotics, what is insight? It has not been asked in two, three years, last two, three years but it's another important uh, part of MSc. What is insight? Awareness of the illness. Now, sometimes the examiners ask you, what are the highest levels of insight? 
so i mean one is simply saying insight present and insight absent right that is one way of uh, describing it but nowadays examiners ask you what is the highest level of insight so basically we have got five grades of insight and the top two grades are emotional insight and which one is the next one haan ji emotional ke alawa dusra kaun sa hai which is the second one come on second one is yes very good akansha very good janvi intellectual insight so what is emotional insight and what is intellectual insight so intellectual insight is i know that i have an illness i know that i have an illness but i am not changing my behavior accordingly but still i am not changing my behavior for example say i know i have schizophrenia but still i refuse to take my medications i know i have schizophrenia but still i continue to sleep for less than 6 hours a day although my psychiatrist has clearly told me that you have to sleep for at least 7 to 8 7 to 8 hours so although i am aware of my illness my behavior is not changing what is emotional insight i know that i have an illness and i am also changing my behavior i know that i have schizophrenia and that is why every month i go to my psychiatrist get my prescription renewed i go to my psychiatrist get my side effects uh, checked checked for and i maintain a regular sleep rhythm i do not consume any kind of substance which which particular substance is known to increase the incidence of schizophrenia high usage of which substance can cause schizophrenia can precipitate schizophrenia han ji kon batayega no it's not alcohol it's not cocaine it's not lsd it's not nicotine it's not heroin yes it's cannabis cannabis can cause schizophrenia and my dear medical students nowadays it's a very disturbing trend that even medical students start thinking have started thinking that you know consuming cannabis is very cool it's not cool every every second or third day i see a student a young guy 20 22 23 year old many of them are medical students they start using cannabis ganja thinking it's cool and then they develop some psychotic symptom or more commonly some kind of anxiety disorder aur phir wo zindagi bhar chalta rehta hai dawai khate rehte ho so please weed is not cool weed is not cool at all do not consume weed you have other ways of being cool bad trip is still a smaller issue they consume weed they consume cannabis and then they develop this illness for the rest of their life please do not do that it's not cool chaliye ab hum baat karenge a couple of questions from antipsychotics now this is a very commonly asked topic in iict the side effects of antipsychotics it's their hot favorite question and see i know why it's their hot favorite see abhi abhi na cerebellum ke liye i was making questions so i was trying to create clinical questions now when you start making clinical questions you realize that in psychiatry most of the clinical questions would be asked from psychopharmacology because otherwise kya hi puchoge aap kitne diagnosis se question puch loge and that is the same problem that the examiners face they are told by the authorities that make clinical question and they will end up making questions from the side effects of drugs or from the drugs themselves so side effects of antipsychotics side effects of antidepressants very high yield topic and as you can see as you must have seen in the last couple of years many questions are asked from the topic typical antipsychotics atypical antipsychotics first of all let's talk about the mechanism of action typical antipsychotics are primarily antagonist at d2 receptors they are primarily antagonist at d2 receptors whereas atypical uh, atypical antipsychotics block not only d2 but also 5 ht2 receptors but also मिसाला पवन कुमार रेस्ट हैंड मिसाला पवन कुमार जी बताइए क्या कर सकता हूं मैं क्वेश्चन पूछिए क्वेश्चन पूछने के लिए यहां थोड़ा गया होगा आपने चलिए लास्ट में करते हैं ताकि बाकी बच्चों का टाइम वेस्ट ना हो ठीक है अच्छा ट्रायल किया होगा अच्छा तो आप ऐसे ट्रायल नहीं करें तो अच्छा रहेगा हाँ सो डी टू एंटागोनिज्म नाउ स्टूडेंट्स प्लीज रिमेंबर बिफोर आई टॉक अबाउट डी टू एंटागोनिज्म रिमेंबर दैट इन स्किड्सोफ्रेनिया वी हैव गॉट पॉजिटिव सिम्टम्स एंड वी हैव गॉट नेगेटिव सिम्टम्स यू रिमेंबर दिस पॉजिटिव सिम्टम्स आर कॉज बाय अ हाइपर डोपामिनर्जिक स्टेट
in mesolimbic tract whereas negative symptoms are caused by a hypodopaminergic state in which tract mesocortical tract now very good dr pratish very good now we want an antipsychotic we want a drug that would decrease dopamine activity in mesolimbic tract and that will increase dopamine activity in mesocortical tract so see you want a drug which will decrease dopamine in one part of the brain and increase dopamine in another part of brain that gives you a uh, you know a, a reason to understand why it is so difficult to develop a proper antipsychotic your drug has to do two different things in different areas of the brain so now once you have this knowledge let's again go back to the mechanism of action of antipsychotics and see how is it involved how is it connected sorry but mai isko delete kar raha hu so typical antipsychotics are blockers of d2 d2 receptors so they antagonize d2 receptors and we know that decreasing dopamine will help in treatment of positive symptoms so they are effective against the positive symptoms whereas atypical antipsychotics they are antagonists at d2 receptors as well as they are antagonists at 5h2 receptor particularly 5h2 h2a receptors now when you block 5h2a receptors in the mesocortical tract it increases dopamine in those areas of brain when you antagonize 5 ht2 receptor it increases dopamine in the mesocortical tract whereas antagonism of d2 in the mesolimbic tract decreases the positive symptom that is why atypical antipsychotics are effective against both positive symptoms as well as negative symptoms so would you be able to remember this is this live on app yes students who all those who are watching it on youtube the first hour will would be there on the youtube also simultaneously it would be streamed but after the first hour the uh, stream on youtube would be stopped and only the uh, students of cerebellum would be able to watch it right so if you are watching it on youtube and if you are a cerebellum subscriber please switch to the app uh, kyunki youtube pe ek ghante mein band ho jayega youtube pe wo hai ye jhalak wo hota nahi ek dikha ke thoda sa chhod dete hain ki zyada jankari ke liye aaiye app pe promotional activity हाँ जी तो अच्छा आप क्या बोल रहे हैं एच एस टू होस्ट एंड पेनलिस्ट प्लीज रिपीट सर अच्छा ओके सर आई एम रिपीटिंग इट हाँ ट्रेनल ट्रेलर है जानवी ने सही बोला है दिस इज ट्रेलर एंड ईशा पूरी पिक्चर देखने के लिए कृपया सब्सक्राइब करें सरिपलम अकेडमी चलो यार इसको इसके वो क्या कहते हैं स्निपेट्स लेके लगा मत देना बहुत बेचती होगी पेशेंट्स ने देख बच्चे तो कुछ नहीं बोलेंगे पेशेंट्स ने देख लिया ना तो बहुत बहुत इंसल्ट करेंगे चलो एनी वेस हाँ जी all right so what i was saying was the antagonism of d2 receptors helps us decrease the positive symptoms because positive symptoms are caused by i don't understand hindi i am sorry i'll i'll go back to english i'll go back to english the the only issue is coupon bata do koi bhai tum agar chat mein ho to tumhe coupon ko chahiye tum to already ho isme चलो यार डिस्टर्ब मत करो पढ़ाने दो मुझे सो वॉट आई वॉज सेइंग वॉज वॉट आई वॉज सेइंग वॉज दैट एक्सेसिव लेवल्स ऑफ डोपामीन कॉजेस पॉजिटिव सिम्टम्स एक्सेसिव लेवल्स ऑफ डोपामीन इन मीजो लिम्बिक ट्रैक कॉजेस पॉजिटिव सिम्टम्स लेसर लेवल्स ऑफ डोपामीन इन मीजो कॉर्टिकल ट्रैक कॉजेस नेगेटिव सिम्टम्स वेन वी गिव टिपिकल एंटीसाइकोटिक्स दे एक्ट एज डी टू एंटागोनिस्ट इन द मीजो लिम्बिक ट्रैक इन द मीजो लिम्बिक ट्रैक and by acting as antagonists in the mesolimbic tract they decrease positive symptoms but the atypical antipsychotics they act as dopamine antagonist in mesolimbic tract so they decrease the positive symptoms at the same time they also act as antagonist at 5ht2a receptor antagonism of 5ht2a receptor in the mesocortical tract increases the dopamine levels in the mesocortical tract that is why they also improve the negative symptoms is it clear now is it clear now so 
acts on positive symptoms, acts on both positive symptoms as well as negative symptoms. Now, if we talk about, if we talk about the extra pyramidal side effects, extra pyramidal side effects. Now, this is a third track that is important in schizophrenia. Extra pyramidal side effects are caused by dopamine blocker, dopamine blockade in which tract of the brain? EPS is caused by dopamine block in which tract of the brain? Bataye? Hanji, kon bataega? Isha, Rahul, Isha, very good. Good job, Isha. So it is caused by, yes, Trishita Chetalji, very good. Akansha, very good. So extra middle side effects are caused by dopamine blockade in nigro striatal tract. Nigro striatal tract. Nigro striatal tract is, it starts from substantia nigra and it goes to striatum. So basically in the basal ganglia, basically in the basal ganglia, we know that what is the function of basal ganglia? It smoothens the motor movement. If you block the dopamine receptors in the basal ganglia, the movements would become disordered and that is what leads to extra pyramidal side effects. Now coming back to the discussion on typical antipsychotics and atypical antipsychotics, we said that the only mechanism of action of typical is due to D2 blockade. Whereas for atypical, we have two mechanisms of action. D2 as well as 5 HT2A blockade. So, typicals are strong blockers of D2 receptors, whereas atypicals are not as strong blockers of D2 receptors. Hence, which of these would cause more extra pyramidal side effect? Of course, the typical antipsychotics. So, typical antipsychotics are more commonly associated with extra pyramidal side effects. But when we talk about the metabolic side effects, the table gets turned. Metabolic side effects like weight gain, dyslipidemia. For metabolic side effects, atypical antipsychotics cause metabolic side effects more than typical antipsychotics. So side effects like weight gain, dyslipidemia, diabetes mellitus. Who will tell me which antipsychotic is associated with the maximum weight gain? Who will tell me this? It is? Clozapine, very good. The antipsychotic associated with maximum weight gain is clozapine. Ab chalte hai hum INICT ke question pe. Let's go to the question that was asked in INICT. Which of the following is not correct statement about the mechanism of action of antipsychotics? D2 receptor blockade improves positive symptoms. Is it a correct statement or incorrect statement? It is a correct statement. 5 ht one receptor blockade improves positive symptoms. Correct or incorrect? Sorry, incorrect. 5 HT2A blockade helps improve negative symptoms. Correct. And M1 blockade helps in reducing EPS. That is also correct. To improve uh, EPS, we mostly use drugs which have got anticholinergic action. So they act on the muscarinic receptors. So this is also correct. So the only statement which is incorrect is. No, this is is 5 ht one receptor blockade improves positive symptoms. This is an incorrect statement. Right, guys? Chalye. Now we'll spend at least 15-20 minutes in understanding all the side effects of antipsychotics. Right? Medico Sir, last FMG hai, aaj ka live full YouTube pe rakho. But aap dekho, aisa hai na ki, humare jo students Cerebellum ke hai, jinnoh ne app, app launch honne ke pehle hi, they trusted us, they bought the app, they gave their hard and money, and if we do everything free on YouTube, they feel bad. And I mean, of course, anybody would feel bad. So we are, we are very, you know, thankful and very grateful to the students who, who subscribed the app even before it was launched. So that is why you know we want to do more stuff for the students who are who, who trusted us. So sorry, I'm really sorry about this, but it's allowed me. Chalye, side effects of antipsychotics. 
but abhi next 20 minutes i would be live on youtube also and this is an important topic so side effects of any psychotics we just read that d2 blockade in nigrostriatal tract is what causes extra pyramidal side effects theek hai now most common or more commonly it would be seen with typicals in comparison to atypicals theek hai now please answer one question for me would extra pyramidal side effect be more common with oral antipsychotics or parenteral antipsychotics if we give antipsychotics by intramuscular injection would would that cause more eps or giving antipsychotics orally would cause more eps bataiye parenteral of course so parenteral more than oral now let's talk about the first eps drug induced parkinsonism now we just we we know that parkinson's disease is caused by lack of dopamine or hypodopaminergic state in basal ganglia when you give antipsychotic you are also doing the same you are blocking dopamine receptors causing a hypodopaminergic state right so drug induced parkinsonism is one of the common extra pyramidal side effect we know that the triad of parkinson's is tremors rigidity and bradykinesia and we see all three of them in drug induced parkinsonism so whenever we start a patient especially on typical antipsychotics if we start patient on a typical antipsychotic we always add a drug with an anticholinergic property as a prophylaxis so drugs like benztropine or drugs like trihexyphenidyl or even promethazine they are they are used as they are used as a prophylaxis they are used as a prophylaxis against the extra pyramidal side effects and if somebody does develop extra pyramidal side effect again you give the same drugs the anticholinergics now this is a commonly asked question so say you are shown this figure a a young female who had schizophrenia was brought to psychiatry emergency in an aggressive state she was agitated she was agitated and she was given intramuscular haloperidol to calm him to calm her down to bring down the symptoms immediately after giving haloperidol the patient had this up rolling of eyeballs what is the diagnosis and what is the treatment ha ji diagnosis kya hai treatment kya hai very good this is oculogyric crisis and what kind of side effect is it it's acute dystonia what is acute dystonia sudden contraction of a muscle group sudden contraction of a muscle group if the sudden contraction happens in the extraocular muscles it would cause uprolling of eyeballs uh, i i don't think you guys would have ever have seen these cases in the in real life but it's a very dramatic presentation patient comes in the emergency you give injection and suddenly there is uprolling of the eyeball and it it looks very frightening the family members all get very scared and then how do you treat it what do you give you it's the earlier side effect more commonly seen in young males torticollis may happen sudden contraction of sternocleidomastoid prismus may happen contraction of the jaw and oculogyric crisis can it be fatal can it be fatal kon batayega ki kya ye fatal ho sakta hai can it be fatal and if yes how and if no why not yes vandana tell me how can it be fatal charan no jaya yes niharika yes batao beta how can it be fatal shweta previous slide to yahi hai the previous slide was this so yes very good shubham very good if it involves the laryngeal muscles laryngeal dystonia yes very good isha very good riya so laryngeal dystonia can be fatal if it involves the muscles of larynx prophylaxis is again going to be the anticholinergics and treatment would be you want to give intramuscular anticholinergic usually you give intramuscular promethazine you want to give a drug with anticholinergic property usually we give promethazine important question 
कॉमनली आस क्वेश्चन ठीक है जी ऑल राइट एक्यूट एकेथेजिया मोस्ट कॉमन साइड इफेक्ट ऑफ एंटीसाइकोटिक्स एक्यूट एकेथेजिया एन इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन बेसिकली पेशेंट से बोथ थिंग्स पेशेंट से डॉक्टर आई फील वेरी रेस्टलेस सो देर इज अ फीलिंग ऑफ रेस्टलेसनेस प्राइमरली इन लेग्स द पेशेंट इज रेस्टलेस पेशेंट इज नॉट एबल टू स्टैंड स्टिल पेशेंट ना खड़े नहीं होते पेशेंट जैसे इफ द पेशेंट स्टैंडिंग पेशेंट विल कीप ऑन डूइंग समथिंग लाइक दिस राइट दिस इज द रेस्टलेसनेस द पेशेंट शो रेस्टलेसनेस इन लेग्स एंड देन यू कैन ऑल्सो सी द ऑब्जेक्टिव साइंस like i just showed the patients are very fidgety they keep on pacing they keep on you know uh, shifting from one leg to another so all these are the objective signs it is the most common side effect and what is the treatment the drug of choice is beta blockers like propranolol once aims asked this question i think it was somewhere in 2016 or 17 Tanya is asking, sir, restless leg syndrome and acute leg disease is same or not? Who will tell the answer? Yeah, Raj, unfortunately, na, wo nahi ho pa raha hai. Aap logon ko main dekh nahi pa raha hoon. Last time FMG class mein na, I could see the students and you know I made them uh, switch on their cameras and uh, we could uh, actually interact. So, but ah, you nahi ho pa raha yaar ye. एक सेकंड में ट्राई करूं जस्ट गिव मी सेकंड गाइस ज़ूम स्टार्टिंग की सेटिंग में मे बी चेंज करना होगा चलो छोड़ो नहीं हो पा रहा है आज फिर से कभी और क्लास करेंगे देन विल डू इट शेयर कंप्यूटर साउंड ब्ला 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 सब बेकार है restless leg syndrome what happens is restless leg syndrome mein kya hota hai when the patient lies down when the patient is about to sleep the moment the patient lies down there is a creeping sensation creeping crawling sensation in the legs at the time of sleeping when you are trying to sleep there is a creeping crawling sensation in the legs and that sensation gets relieved when you walk around when you get up when you walk around or when you shake your leg so the problem is whenever the patient is going to sleep this the sensation start to you know show up and the patient has to shake the leg or walk around so that is restless leg syndrome and who will tell me the drug of choice for restless leg uh, restless leg syndrome which drugs are usually used gabapentin kuch log keh rahe hain ropinirol kuch log keh rahe hain what is the reference for gabapentin any reference for gabapentin zainab ma'am ji aaj sir chaliye abhi hamari psychiatry ki books the psychiatry books still say uh, dopamine agonist Like ropinirol, but if you guys are saying uh, gabapentin, if you are saying GRG sir said that, in that case I will ask sir, that is it some kind of new update or not? चलो ठीक है. All right, let's go to the fourth one, tardive dyskinesia. We are talking about the extra pyramidal side effects, tardive dyskinesia. Now tardive means long term. Tardive means long term. Now I can see all the students. अभी कुछ किसी ने कुछ setting change की है. Ah, now I can see the students. आप लोगों में से जो नहा धोके बैठे हैं अपने camera on कर सकते हैं. कोई भी नहीं बैठा नहा धोके. Very upsetting. चलिए. Tardive dyskinesia कहाँ से sir? Camera तो बेटा आपके ही उसमें होगा. Yes, this is a live session, Doctor K. Option नहीं show हो रही. Tardive means long term, dyskinesia means abnormal movement. No option for camera. Very good.
so basically tardiness can is what happens if 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 you have been taking antipsychotics for too long a time for a long period of time permission officer video ki are shubham dekh raha kuch humne permission off kar rakhi hai kya give permission to the students okay sir haan ji you have to change the permission परमिशन ही नहीं मिल पा रही हमारी जिंदगी में चलिए लॉन्ग टर्म साइड इफेक्ट कॉज बाय लॉन्ग टर्म यूज ऑफ एंटीसाइकोटिक्स सो बेसिकली वॉट हैपन्स इज इट इन्वॉल्व इन वॉलेंट्री मूवमेंट ऑफ जॉब नाउ लुक एट मी दिस दिस कुड बी अमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चन और वीडियो बेस्ड क्वेश्चन द पेशेंट द पेशेंट टेंस टू हैव यू नो दिस मूवमेंट पेशेंट डज समथिंग लाइक दिस इट अपियर एज एफ इज ट्राइंग टू चू समथिंग so they can be chewing movements they can be involuntary movements of lips pouting jo aajkal wo photo khichwate hue selfie ke time pe log karte hain na the pose that should the people make while making self taking selfie pouting puckering smacking smacking movement when you like some food this is smacking movement yes rabbit syndrome something like this this is rabbit syndrome right so all these involuntary movements may happen they may be choreoacetoid movement uh, choreoacetoid movements of the extremities something like this right so all these movements come under tardive dyskinesia what is the cause of tardive dyskinesia aims question i think somewhere in 2010 it was asked aims question what is the answer so if you are blocking dopamine receptors for too long a time the remaining receptors may go into super sensitive super sensitivity state so super sensitivity of dopamine receptors causes the abnormal movements yes very good shivani very good sarika so what is the treatment change the antipsychotic usually if the patient is on typical antipsychotic you change it to an atypical antipsychotic and you can also use dopamine depleters because it is being caused by super sensitivity of dopamine receptors there is more dopaminergic activity if you deplete the receptors uh, if you deplete the dopamine itself dopamine depleters then the side effect tends to get controlled right we met inhibitors very good chaliye nms Used to be the favorite question of examiners. पिछले दो साल से क्वेश्चन नहीं आया है. For the last two years they haven't asked question. Before that it used to be hot favorite question of examiners for examiners. So for NMS remember three main symptoms. We have got fever, we have got rigidity, and we have got increased creatinine phosphokinase levels. And then we have got these additional symptoms like autonomic disturbances, diaphoresis, altered consciousness, tremors, leukocytosis, and liver enzyme elevation. right but what is more important for us is to understand what what causes all of this how will you be able to remember it what is the pathophysiology behind the development of nms so all the symptoms of nms can be explained by the fact that antipsychotics cause dopamine blockade dopamine blockade at different parts of the brain will lead to different symptoms of nms for example if there is dopamine blockade in corpus striatum what will it cause it will cause the muscle rigidity the muscles will become rigid when the muscle go into a state of rigidity it causes the production of heat normally which part of your brain regulates the temperature it is hypothalamus so in usual circumstances if the temperature was going up hypothalamus should have regulated it but the problem is the dopamine receptors in hypothalamus are also blocked so now the hypothalamus cannot regulate the heat leading to fever fever has developed rigidity has developed now the muscle would start getting damaged the muscle damage would cause increased levels of creatinine phosphokinase rhabdomyolysis or muscle damage will cause increased levels of creatinine phosphokinase some not only creatinine phosphokinase even the myoglobin would start appearing in the blood stream and from there to urine myoglobin urea and what can myoglobin urea cause acute 
renal failure. Not only this, the blockage of dopamine receptors in spinal neurons will cause all kind of autonomic disturbances. So if we remember that dopamine blockade is responsible for all these symptoms, and if you remember what are the roles of different parts of the brain, we can easily work out the symptoms of NMS. Going back to the list again, fever, rigidity, increased CPK, autonomic disturbances, diaphoresis, right? So all of this is caused by dopamine blockade in different parts of the brain. What is the treatment? What is the first thing that you will do? First of all, what is the first thing that you will do? First of all, you stop the antipsychotics. You stop the offending drug. What else will you do? You will hydrate the patient. And then as far as your MCQs are concerned, the drug of choice is dendrolene, which is a skeletal muscle relaxant. which is a skeletal muscle relaxant. What other drugs can you use? You can use dopamine agonists also. Like bromocryptine and amentadine. Very good. Okay, ji. Chaliye. Apart from these, there are endocrine side effects. Now the fourth pathway that we need to be aware of. Which pathway? Blockade of dopamine in which pathway is responsible for the endocrine side effects? Yes, students. Bataiye. Isha, which pathway? Isha, batao kaun sa pathway hai? Yes, Shubham, which pathway? Janvi, very good. Tubro infundibular pathway. We know that dopamine is an inhibitor of prolectin. So, dopamine is an inhibitor of prolectin and uh, if you are giving dopamine antagonist, what will it do? Hyper prolectinemia. Hyper prolectinemia. And how will hyper prolectinemia manifest? In females, it will manifest with symptoms like galactoria, menstrual disturbances, and in males with sexual dysfunction and lower libido. Usually, typical antipsychotics cause endocrine side effects more than atypical antipsychotics. We know about this. Can you name some atypical antipsychotics which often cause endocrine side effects? There are two atypical antipsychotics which have also been asked in the exams. Bupropion is not an antipsychotic. Hanji, batayye. Very good. Risperidone is one of them. Which is the other one? Ah, this guy, Anukriti wrote it. Very good, Anukriti. Amisulpride. Risperidone and Amisulpride. Prashasti, very good. Risperidone and Amisulpride. Which, which antipsychotic is associated with minimum EPS? Which antipsychotic is associated with minimum EPS? Isha, metazapine is not an antipsychotic. Which antipsychotic has minimal EPS? Answer is clozapine. Which is the only antipsychotic which has anti suicide properties? Which is the only antipsychotic with anti suicide properties? Bataiye. Only antipsychotic with anti suicide properties. Again, the answer is clozapine. Uh, 
अगेन द आंसर इज क्लोज अप इन शुभम एक मिनट रुक जाओ बस ये लास्ट क्वेश्चन कर लें उसके बाद आप यूट्यूब बंद करना लेट लेट जस्ट कंप्लीट दिस टॉपिक प्लीज लिथियम बेटा लिथियम इज नॉट एन एंटीसाइकोटिक द ओनली मूड स्टेबिलाईजर विथ एंटी सुसाइड प्रॉपर्टी इज लिथियम द ओनली एंटीसाइकोटिक इज क्लोज अप इन राइट All right, let's complete this question. A patient was diagnosed with schizophrenia and started on oral risperidone. After few hours of taking the antipsychotic, he had to suddenly rush to the emergency department with complaints of uprolling of eyeball. What is the next step in the management? Simple question. Batao. Option C, intravenous promethazine should be given to the patient. All of the following are good prognostic factors in schizophrenia, except. बताइए आंसर क्या है इसका क्वेश्चन ऑन प्रोग्नोसिस ऑफ स्क्रिप्ट ऑफ इंडिया ऑल ऑफ देम आर गुड एंड इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन ऑल ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आर गुड प्रोग्नोस्टिक फैक्टर्स इन स्क्रिप्ट ऑफ इंडिया एक्सेप्ट यंग एज में प्रोग्नोसिस इज बेटर और ओल्ड एज में द प्रोग्नोसिस इज बेटर इन द यंगर एज ग्रुप और ओल्डर एज ग्रुप प्रोग्नोसिस इज बेटर इन द ओल्डर एज ग्रुप और आई शुड रिफ्रेम इट एंड आई शुड से दैट if the onset is at a later age ulta likh diya later onset is better prognosis younger age at onset is bad prognosis why is it so just imagine a 17 year old boy develops schizophrenia he has not completed his education he does not have a family he does not have a job i mean his own family is not does not have so this guy versus a 45 year old female develops schizophrenia already educated already has a family already in a stable relationship which one will have a better prognosis if the answer is later positive symptoms good prognosis negative symptoms bad prognosis acute onset good prognosis insidious onset bad prognosis what is the definition of acute onset when do we say that when do we say that the onset is acute if the symptoms develop in less than 2 days it's called as abrupt onset if the symptoms developed in develop into less than 2 weeks it is called as acute onset 2 weeks to 3 months it's called as sub acute onset and more than 3 months it's called as insidious onset now if the onset is acute if the schizophrenia appears suddenly then it would also go away suddenly but if the schizophrenia develops very slowly very gradually over months it does not even go away so insidious onset is bad prognosis now tell me about this one this option option b a patient who has schizophrenia and who also has depression does he have a better prognosis or a patient who has schizophrenia and cannot feel any emotions cannot and has got what is called as affective flattening what is affective flattening no emotions does not experience emotions presence of depression is actually good prognosis if the affective symptoms are there what are the affective symptoms depressive symptoms and manic symptoms if the affective symptoms are there it's a good prognosis and lack of affective symptoms is bad prognosis why if the brain is capable enough of induce of of you know creating emotions or experiencing emotions it means that the capability of brain is still intact if the brain is not even able to experience emotions properly that is even worse prognosis so late age of onset is good prognosis associated with depression is good prognosis positive symptom is good prognosis answer becomes c and we'll see the other factors in the next slide acute onset good prognosis insidious onset bad prognosis advanced age good prognosis early onset bad prognosis females who tend to have onset at a later age also have a good prognosis in, in comparison to males positive symptom good prognosis negative symptom bad prognosis presence of affective symptom good prognosis absence of affective symptoms bad prognosis and then family history of mood disorder is good prognosis family history of schizophrenia is bad prognosis overall the 
प्रोग्नोसिस ऑफ मूड डिसऑर्डर लाइक बाइपोलर डिसऑर्डर इज बेटर देन द प्रोग्नोसिस ऑफ स्किड्स ऑफ इनिया सो इफ समी हैज स्किड्स ऑफ इनिया एंड इज ऑल्सो फैमिली हिस्ट्री ऑफ स्किड्स ऑफ इनिया विच मीन इज जेनेटिक लोडिंग द प्रोग्नोसिस बिकम्स इवन वर्स दैट इज वाई फैमिली हिस्ट्री ऑफ मूड डिसऑर्डर हैज बेटर प्रोग्नोसिस a psychotic a psychotic patient presented with purposeless movement and was once observed to stand still in the ward for long periods of time what is his sign standing in the same position for long period of time what is his sign what is his sign right it is posturing and a patient presented with purposeless movement what could be purposeless a purposeless movement it could be anything it could be stereotypy probably on examination he has negativism and vexi flexibility by now you have made your diagnosis as catatonia all these are catatonic symptoms and what is the first line treatment for catatonia intravenous lorazepam and electroconvulsive therapy intravenous lorazepam and ect are the first line treatment for catatonia but first you give lorazepam if it doesn't work then you go for electroconvulsive therapy chaliye so with this we have completed the chapter of schizophrenia all right we say bye to students who were watching us on youtube bye guys all the best study hard do well